The TrekWorks YouTube channel is sponsored by HDA Modelworks, suppliers of scale lighting products, detail accessory parts, and complete model kits. Visit HDAModelworks.com today. Welcome back everybody, Boyd here with you. This is part two of our Polar Lights 350 scale classic Enterprise build series. We're going to come back with you guys and pick up right where we left off in part one. Uh, we're working on the lower saucer some more. We left off where we had all the basic wiring installed. We had all of our LED strip mounted and we tested it to make sure all the basic lighting worked. And then uh, you can see the biggest difference now that I've done is I've gone ahead and mounted the um, Tenant Controls control board. This is the board that you'll get if you order the Tenant Controls 50th anniversary lighting kit for this model. It also includes either your choice of the uh, LED type or the motor type spinning Bassard effects for the engines. And we'll show you what we're going to be using for that when we get to that part and the wiring that we need to do there. But we're focusing on the saucer right now. So I've got their um, wiring schematic here. Many of you guys ask about a wiring schematic. So when you order the Tenet Control setup, you're going to get this wiring schematic with it. It's really simple to use. You'll see everything's broken down here. You can come back and use this for reference if you want to, if you get your set. The only thing that I've added here to these instructions is I've marked which ones are plus and which ones are minus, which weren't there on everything except for the power coming in. So that helps you out a little bit as far as figuring out which wires go where. So everything is broken down into a group here. You can see that we've got this one at the top that says uh, saucer navigation light green, saucer, na saucer navigation light red. And then you've got a gray and a red wire coming off that, which is on the uh, control board's wiring harness. You'll see the colors coming off. Then we've got a yellow and we've got a gray. And the gray is a common ground, so you're going to be using that gray wire to connect up several of these groups. They all kind of tie in together the same. And then the individual wires are what I, uh, I call the control wire, which actually makes the blinking effect for each particular group. So you want to make sure you pay attention to that. But it's really simple. If you look at how it's laid out, um, you can see, let's go down to the, the lower uh, saucer navigation white LEDs, which we've gone ahead and installed. We've used uh, SMDs to put these in. They're all glued in place. We left off with that. Uh, basically mounted, and I showed you the tip about, you know, stay away, stay away from this edge here. With the upper one, you don't want to squish that when you put the lid on. Um, so using the uh, schematic here, I've gone ahead and uh, followed the instructions. We've got a white wire that came off of the board, you can see here. And that runs over and connects to the uh, positive side of my, uh, my SMDs that are operating the navigation lights on the lower part of the saucer, the blinking white lights. So I just... Um, took the white wire and came over here and then I jumped and came over to the other side so we're we're tying both sides into the same wire and that's the positive side on both of these SMDs that's the side that has the resistor pre-wired onto it and that's connected to the white wire then we've got the gray wire and that comes over and operates the ground which um, I've gone ahead and done the same thing I've just tied them all in together jumped them together here as you can see and so we're basically all set up and ready to go on the blinking navigation lights and then one thing I want to mention, which I actually forgot about on this board here, uh, I'm used to using the, the older style uh, 1000B board that doesn't have this feature, but this is an extra feature that Ralph has included on the, uh, the updated Tenet Controls board, the 50th anniversary board. You've also got a little special effect here for the uh, uh, impulse engine lights here that we did in orange that you guys remember me installing in the last video. So um, I had those basically connected to power so that they would just come on whenever the... Uh, power was activated on the model. So I've gone ahead and and uh, disconnected that particular circuit and I've ran the circuit off of the board instead. So what we've got for the uh, impulse engines is we've got a, uh, we had two brown wires coming off of the harness here, one to each side that goes to the plus side of the LED here, which has to have a, a 470 ohm resistor in line. And then we've got the gray wire again, which is our common ground that came back. And so I just uh, took an extra one of my dark blue wires that I'm using for negative here, cut that and attached it to the negative side on both sides. And you can see I cut a little notch right here um, on the edge of the saucer so that I ran these wires across that when I put the lid down, they're, they're not going to get pinched or anything. They're going to have a nice little cubby hole to sit in. And uh, then we attached that to the gray wire coming off of the board. So that was our ground. So everything has been hooked up on the lower section here. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn on the power for you. And you can see we've got all of our... Uh, 
window lighting operating as before. Now we've got our blinking lights here on the bottom of the saucer and on the sides. And then also we've got this pulsing effect, if you can see that now. There's a little extra effect there for the impulse engines. Nice little feature that Ralph included on that. So we've got that, that operating now. So everything is good to go there. We've got our center LED operating for the lower planetary sensor. And um, we're all set. We're going to be able to move on to the upper part of the saucer now where we've got to connect a couple of uh, a green and a, and a red SMD uh, for our upper blinking effect for our navigation lights. And then we've also got to connect uh, the LED strip lighting, which is going to light up the upper bridge dome and the, the BC deck on top. And, and then I mentioned in the first video, we're going to put a piece of... Um, uh, I use a, a piece of flat cardboard here. I glue it to the bottom of the uh, uh, the upper saucer, and uh, I'll put a couple of strips of LED tape on that facing downward, and that will light our center section here, and two strips on the top side, which will light up our uh, bridge and our, our dome on the top. So I'm going to grab the uh, the upper part of the saucer, and we'll put that on the bench in just a second and uh, start working on that. And then once we complete all that, we'll be ready to seal this up. Now we've got some extra wires coming off of our harness here. I've just got those tucked down into the neck opening. Uh, two of those wires are going to be for the rear blinking lights, or the ion pods, a lot of people like to call them, at the back of the ship. So we're going to want to make sure we run those two wires down the neck uh, and have them extra long. So when we go ahead and mount the saucer on top of the secondary hull, the neck will be in place on the secondary hull. We'll be able to pull those wires through and then pull them out the front where the, the uh, uh, deflector housing opening is. And that's where we'll terminate all the wires. So all the wiring coming out of the secondary hull uh, from the engines, from all the lighting in the secondary hull, that's how I terminate everything. I do it all at the front. And then just before I put the dish on and the housing, I just kind of tuck everything in there and then close it all up. And if I ever have to get to that later for some reason, I can open it back up real easy and all the wiring will be located right there. So we don't need all these wires. Um, you can see on the... Uh, diagram here that Ralph's included power for actual lighting of the shuttle bay. Well, we don't actually need to do that because the wiring that I'm going to be using on the internal part of the secondary hull that I'll create using my uh, this this wire right here again, the same way I did in the upper part of the saucer, uh, I'll be tying all my wiring for my lighting in there. Now, on this particular build, we're not, um, we're not doing the interior shuttle bay detail, so we're going to be doing something a little bit different with the lighting there, and we'll show you all that when we get to the secondary hull part. Um, so basically this is ready to be closed up um, once we finish the wiring on the top of the saucer. So one of the things that I do before I do that now is I got my airbrush here and I've just got some um, basic flat white paint that I decanted from my um, uh, my flat white that I'm using. You know, the, uh, the quick color that I buy at a Home Depot that I showed you for my light blocking in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dust over these uh, window groups here. I'm not putting a huge, you know, thick coat on this. I'm just dusting over it um, in all the spots where there's windows. And the reason for that, guys, is that uh, what that does is that gives me my uh, diffusion of the light on the inside of the model that I'm looking for. I don't want to see, um, you know, I don't want to see twinkling lights, uh, you know, hot spots for my LEDs coming through this. And uh, it's just something that I do every time. You can do it with sandpaper if you want to. You know, you can scuff them up. And that works pretty good, but this is a really easy way to do that. Um, it does two things. It makes the uh, lighting look more even. Uh, it makes it so that there isn't any, you know, twinkling effects where you'll see hot spots where you can see the LEDs. And also, you can't really look in the windows and you won't be able to see any of the wiring or anything like that, you know. So most of the windows on this are pretty hard to see through, but some of them are actually um, molded really clear. And if you looked in there really close, you'd actually be able to see wires and stuff, and that wouldn't look good. So... It's just something I do. I do it in all the sections where I'm using the kit supplied glass. When we finish at the end with the saucer here, um, as I mentioned, I'll be using some canopy glue to go in and fill these outer perimeter, and they kind of self-diffuse anyway when you use that stuff, and they'll match up perfectly with everything else, and you'll see that as we go along. So um, one of the last things I'll mention here, too, uh, now that we're done with the lower saucer, is uh, I took my hobby knife, and I went around all the way around this edge here, and scraped all the paint and the primer off of that right down to the bare plastic so we make sure when we glue this I also took it and stuck it in these little pinholes here and gave it a couple spins scrape off any paint that was in there that way when we use our glue and glue the saucer down we get a nice stable secure bond uh, one of the reasons of course you want that to be really strong when you glue it but the other reason is is um, when you come back and you're doing your seam and you're doing your putty repair around this it's really uh, you know it's important to have 
a really solid glue seal all the way around this because you're going to be putting a lot of pressure on it when you're sanding and using putty and all that. And if it's not a really good glue bond, it will crack apart in a few places and you'll have trouble with the putty, you know, covering up the seam um, or the whole thing shifting a little bit when you're trying to sand it and the putty will move and it'll cause little bulges in the putty and stuff like that. So you want to make sure everything is nice and locked down really solid and the saucer is permanently sealed up, you know, and uh, you'll never have to worry about it moving around. So that's pretty much it for the lower half of the saucer. Um, uh, one thing I'll mention here, I guess, before I close this up, a couple of you guys ask about a wiring schematic. Well, the schematic you'll follow mostly is what you, you see here from the uh, tenant controls uh, board setup. Otherwise, this is really uh, not really in need of a schematic here, you guys. This is, um, as I explained in the beginning, this is really simple how the wires come in. You've just got a plus and a minus. The plus being the yellow, the blue being the minus. And I came in and I made that basic ring with the two wires. And that's our main power. You can see at the end of that ring right here is the two spots where I was hooking up the power. So uh, just branching off of each one of those uh, you know, rings, um, coming to each individual component here, we have two wires. We have a plus and a minus going to each LED strip here. Really simple. It just connects you know, plus to plus and minus to minus. And this little ring will feed power to all of these things here. So you don't really need to have a schematic to think of that. It's just really simple. So then uh, the same thing with the board here. So everything that's powering on to that, you know, that you want to power up off of your main power source, you just connect straight to that. So the board here had a plus and a minus. You can see right here on the uh, schematic, it had these two separate wires on the side of the board, which were plus and minus inputs. So I just tied those in to my power coming in. You can see I just uh, jumped them right off of here, came over, and I've got them connected uh, right into the main power source that started off with this ring right here. So when you hit the power, everything's getting power at the same time. The control board, all the lighting and everything, so everything comes on at once. Then the control board feeds the power through it to the wires that come off of all this to your individual components. So now we've got power coming out of this going to our navigation lights and everything. And on to the back of the ship where our rear blinking lights go. And then we'll tie into that when I set up the control boards for the bassards on the engines. There'll be power in the inner part of the uh, secondary hull the same way. So what you do at the very end is you've got everything built power-wise like that in the saucer. You've got the same thing built up in the rear. When we come out the front of the model through the deflector housing, you'll see I have my wires all hanging out and I'll have them all marked and labeled. And we'll see that power to power. So we'll basically be connecting the upper half of the model's power to the lower half. Once we tie all those together, everything gets powered up. So what I'll be doing here, before I close the saucer up, I'll solder on two wires right here, a longer yellow one and a longer blue one, and I'll feed those down through the neck, and I'll pull them down through when I set this down on top of the secondary hull, pull them out the front of the hole where the uh, deflector housing is, and I'll mark those power, okay? So I know that that's the power for the top half of the saucer here. This is basically self-contained then, and everything in here will light up and have power to it, including the control board. All right, so then we'll, then we'll have two more wires that come off of this control board that come down that'll be marked rear strobe, and that'll be for the rear lighting on the uh, secondary hull that we call the blinking ion pods. And that'll be it. So there'll be a total of four wires coming down through the neck and out through the front of the model that will terminate. And uh, don't worry, though, it, it may sound kind of complicated, but it's really simple. And once we cross each step, I'll show you how we do that one at a time. All right, so what I'll do now is I'll pause real quick, and we'll come back with the uh, upper part of the saucer. And we'll do our uh, wiring and then finish uh, installing our SMDs and that. And we'll have this saucer ready to get closed up. Be right back. Okay, everybody. Well, we're back again with more. Uh, we're ready to work on the upper part of the saucer now. Uh, the first things that I've done here is I've stuck some of my scotch tape on here over these holes where we're going to mount the SMDs for the uh, red and green navigation lights on the top. And you can also see that I marked them green and red. I do this every time, guys, and it may sound really uh, crazy to do that because you should know, right? But what happens is is that you can uh, you look at the top here and you realize that your green goes on the uh, starboard side and the red goes on the port side. But when you flip this thing over, you can get confused and put them on the wrong side. So I hold this upside down and then check it and mark it so that I make sure I do that right. It'd be a disaster to have them on backwards and find that out after you've got the whole thing put together. So we're ready to do that. Now what I'm going to be doing here is uh, I thought I would show you guys use actually using some of this uh, solar res. Like I talked about how I made the little lenses on the uh, bottom of the saucer there. So we're going to go ahead and do that. 
So I've got my clear scotch tape over the top of these holes here so I can dry them from the top and the bottom side. The light will go through the clear tape and dry it from both sides versus using regular painter's tape. So it takes a little, little bit for this to flow down to the tip because it's pretty thick, but we're going to just put a little bit in here. We want it to uh, feed in there nice and slow. We don't want it to uh, get an air bubble in it. It looks like it went on there really good. We'll go ahead and do the same thing over here. I'm just, you know, I'm not really squeezing. I'm just letting it kind of drizzle into that hole there. Let it settle down on its own. And you give it a second and you let that little, uh, it starts off with a little dome on top. And if you wait a little bit, it'll actually start to self-level out. So that's good. So we'll hit this one here first. This takes about 15 or 20 seconds to dry it. And uh, whenever you put this on, you know, a little bit thick, you need to dry it from both sides is what I figured out. So thus the reason for the, um, the clear scotch tape. So that should be good for the top side. Now I'm hitting it from the bottom. You can see the light's coming right through it. do the same thing over here on this side and we'll hit it a little bit from the bottom and then we'll have a nice little spot to monitor SMDs um, that should be good for that we can go ahead and pull our tape and after I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and hit them one more time just to be sure on the outside here, just for a little bit. Okay, so now we've got a little spot for our um, SMDs to be mounted. One thing I'll point out too is that uh, I just took my hobby knife and before I did this, stuck it in these holes and spun it around a couple times just to make them a little bit further open. It just, um, I don't want to make them too big to where they're bigger than the actual little plastic domes that we mount on here that are included with the kit. But I make them bigger because it just helps get a little bit brighter light to go through there. So your navigation lights will be nice and bright. And uh, it helps a little bit there. The holes that they start off with are kind of small. These little upper ones that are right next to it, I don't worry about. Because uh, after we put all this together, and one of the very last things we'll be doing at the end, I'll be putting some fiber optic in there You know that'll take my lighter and dome the tip of them. And just make them real short and stick them down in there with a little bit of glue. And that'll pick up light from the little side marker lights that we use for white SMDs. And uh, that'll give us a little extra blinking effects there out on the edges. So now what I've got to do is I've got to put some SMDs in here. And I'm using these uh, 0805s. This one's in red and this one's in green. Uh, I get these from Jerry 8 HDA Model Works. You can see they're pre-wired with a resistor on them. They're good from 9 to 15 volts. And uh, you get five in each little pack. So we're only going to need one for each side. We need one green and one red. Now a little thing that I'll pass along that I learned from experience is that... Um, Every time you get some of these, um, take them out of the bag and check them with your power supply before you install them. Uh, it happens from time to time that they get uh, mispacked in the wrong bag or mislabeled. And you you know, you don't want to find that out after you've already glued them in place and wired them up and everything. So I'll always just kind of um, grab one here and get it untangled. They come kind of kind of looped together here. You've got to get this all pulled apart and get one of them free here. There we go. I'll go ahead and put the rest of them away so we don't get a mess going on here. Save these for something for later. But these work out really good for this. They give a really nice, uh, nice, uh, bright, you know, spot of light, and they're they're red, so you don't have to color the lens or whatever. Even though I do, I'll just use a bit of Tamiya. The parts that come with this kit are all in clear. Uh, if you buy the lighting kit, you get the colored ones, but. We use these uh, colored SMDs and we don't have to worry about that. So now I'm going to connect up power to it and just test it. And we should see a nice glowing red color here, hopefully. And we have red, so that's great. All right, so we can go ahead and put this one on. Um, we're going to use a little bit of CA glue for this. Like I said, you can use the solar res to mount everything too, but I'd rather use the cheaper stuff. Solar res is pretty expensive, and I try to you know conserve on that and use it only when I have to. 
So we're going to be putting the red. You can see you got this kind of little clip right here, which acts like a nice little guide. And uh, I'm just going to lay my wire in there. I'm going to make sure that my uh, face of my SMD is pointing straight down onto that. And it's going to be centered. Okay, so now I'll dab a little bit of CA glue on that. Right on top. Okay, and then we'll get this... Uh, set down on there sometimes this can be a little fiddly because the wire will want to jump around in your fingers but once i get it all where i want it i'll just hit it with some of my accelerator here just a little mist give it a few seconds and that'll uh, dry right up and that will be locked down keep your eye on it and make sure it doesn't move on you at the last minute i think we're going to need a little bit more accelerator it's being stubborn there we go Okay, that one's there. Now we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side, this time using a green. Following the same boring procedure, guys. It uh, sounds boring, but this, you know, double checking and everything um, can save you some headaches later on. These are all things I'm just passing along to you from learning by experience. Okay, so we've got a red here. Let's touch our ground on this one. Yep, we've got a nice little green light there so we're going to do the same thing we'll come around here and get this one ready to go okay don't need a huge amount of glue just a nice little drop on there again getting it nice and centered and making sure that the uh, face of the SMD is it's right down on top of that like what we want. Then we're going to hit it here. Keep an eye on it until you see it. You can almost see this stuff when it flashes over when it starts to dry. Okay, so that's locked in place now. So what we're going to need to do with this is we're going to need to um, attach some extra length of wires onto these. You can see you got a plus and a minus. Um, because they're a little bit too short and I'm going to just use some of my regular magnet wire I'll make them maybe about that much longer that way they can when we turn this over and we get ready to connect it down onto the top of the saucer we'll have a little bit of extra length of wire and we can easily reach our connection onto our control board that we need to tie into and then uh, put our heat shrink on there and then what I like to do is I'll use a couple of these little nylon zip ties and I'll feed the wires down I'll hold the lid as close as I can before I close it and you know zip tie some wires so that wire is not flopping around in there and then you know you're gonna to have to have a little bit of slack in it but that way it's not going to be moving around massively and then you just close it all up and glue it shut so that's what we'll do for that so right now what I've got to do is I've got to come back and um, glue in my windows I'm going to be using the kit supply glass here on the top and I'll show you a little modification I do on that as well a little something extra you can see here that talking about that big um, center part of the neck support there in the model that I modified in the lower part of the saucer that I told you I had trouble with when I put these lids you know down on top it also has some pegs that stick up about this high right here and I go ahead and shave those off because they just interfere with that whole thing as well there's nothing you're not losing any strength or anything here the lids all gonna be down on there nice and solid and it just makes it a lot easier when you put it all together to you know it, it just seems to um, interfere with one or the other and uh, just makes it really hard to get the you know the that part of the hull all put together nice and tight where it's not bulging up a little bit so that takes care of that problem everything else here is pretty much the same I haven't touched anything we're gonna have to take our hobby knife and go around this edge as well before we glue it shut to get rid of all the paint and all the primer that's on here and get a nice clean glue bond so let me get the kit glass out we'll come back and get that put in and then we're gonna work on uh, doing our uh, center lighting here that I talked about using some more of the LED strip be right back Back again, everyone. You can see I've got the um, the, kit, the kit glass installed now inside the uh, BC deck here. We don't need to worry about uh, the these four windows here. These going from the outside of the model. We do have the little bow light here, the circular one that goes in the front that does go on on the inside. So that's all glued in place. I use just regular Model Master glue for that and used uh, plenty of it. You want to make sure those are in there, nice and solid, so that when you're um, you know pressing your masks onto these later on you don't uh, 
push the glass inside the model that could be a problem too so use plenty of glue on that um, now one of the things I want to point out here is it's been odd on this kit ever since the first one I worked on you can see that the glass around the sides here it fits really good right it's you know it's nice and it's filling in these these rectangular shapes really nice but these round ones right here this one and this one and this one and this one this one and this one there's these kind of like tabs that are on these that are just kind of you know sticking out around the edge and I noticed just looking in here I can actually see to the outside they don't fill those gaps nice and full like they should so you'll see a weird sort of light leak coming out of there if you don't do anything about that so back to our solar res again guys you could do this with canopy glue but I use solar res in this case because this stuff is really strong and doing this actually helps to to secure the glass in here even better than the model glue so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in and fill in above you can see that little tab right in there right I'm just gonna fill in above that one and this one here and just smooth it over same thing in this one up in the front all the way around so you're doing six spots in total just make sure that that's completely covered up and sealed okay get this out of the way and then we'll hit it with our UV About 15 seconds each. To the other side now. and that takes care of that you can see if you look through the top now you've got like a nice little seal on all these so when you go ahead and mask it it's going to look a lot cleaner it kind of brought those windows up more nice and flush like they should be without a big gap in those so we took care of that little issue so now before I forget about it I'm going to go ahead and um, dust on some white paint the same way we did on our lower windows all the way around and see, I'm not putting it on there super thick. Just to, you know, I can actually still see the window openings behind the paint. That's all I want. Just a little dusting over the top of that so that, um, you know, the light can still go through, but we don't get any twinkling or anything like that. So now our windows are all diffused and ready to go. So the next thing that I want to do is um, I'm going to make a uh, template here for the top so we can put in some strip lighting. We're going to basically put in two strips right here that'll light the uh, upper windows here and the bridge dome and then we're gonna put two more actually we're gonna come in sort of a you know a U shape right here and we're gonna put one this way one this way and one that way and that's gonna light the lower windows in the center part of the saucer that we talked about and this works really good now if you are gonna be using the kit supplied bridge um, I'll explain this a little bit because this question has come up a lot now on this particular model I'm not doing the bridge detail the customer just wanted the lighted dome like it appeared on the TV show so we're not going to be using the bridge in the center but if you do use the bridge I want to point out to you guys that um, a lot of people have the misconception that you have to use the clear parts for that now there is a really nice 3d printed uh, aftermarket bridge available on Shapeways which has superior detail by far to the uh, the you know the the uh, kit supplied bridge where if you look at that one you'll see that the um, control consoles are all uh, you know shaped a lot more accurate the chairs are more accurate they're more you know detailed the viewing screen the whole thing the uh, you know the uh, railings around the center of the bridge the handrails and everything are already done you don't even need to use the photo etch you just have to get in there and do some really careful painting and one of the things I like about that is that it has the individual screens you know molded a lot more precise so you can go in there and you can um, do some careful masking and you can do some spectacular lighting on that you know you can make all the individual control boards and everything light up doing a little bit of creative painting you know the way I would do it is you would uh, basically light it from behind but you'd uh, go in there with your basic Tamiya transparent colors like you know amber yellow blue red and just do some back painting on all those so that you'd give all these illusion of all these different colors and everything in there and it'll turn out fantastic now if you're going to use the kit supplied bridge that lights up just fine because this is molded out of this light colored plastic 
and and light will go through it fine you don't have to use the uh the clear part in fact i found out that using the clear part you know that's only available with the extra polar lights lighting kit um that the light almost comes through it too bright and and kind of washes everything out where if you have it a little bit dimmed down coming through the thicker plastic it uh it gives a nice softer glow so all the decals you put in and everything um they they look a lot more realistic and, and not so washed out with too much light so mounting these little strips of led light behind this like i do here and i'm going to show you in just a second will light up all that really nice now what i do is i basically prime and paint the uh the, the entire bridge inside and out to start with that's the kit supplied part then i'll come back around the edges of that at the top and anywhere i want light to come through i'll just scrape that back off with my hobby knife and then um, using the you know paragraphics photo etch set that's available for that you go ahead and put all the detail in there put your decals on and everything and then when you light it up it'll look really nice and the ones you've seen on my previous builds that's the way i've done it um, it just seems to work out really good the same thing can be done on the shuttle bay you do not have to have the um, the clear plastic parts to uh, to light that up and in fact like i said i think the the uh, opaque parts look a little bit better because they kind of diffuse the light and dim it down a little bit because you're gonna have to mount all your LEDs and everything really close to it and it uh, just brings it down and looks it more subtle and makes it look more in scale so when you actually look in the bridge there's just not this blinding white and you know white light in there that just washes everything out so um, that's how I do that so uh, let me back off the camera here again for just a second I'll go get my template ready and I'll get some LED strip ready to go and we'll go ahead and get uh, this uh, lighting here done in the center then we're getting really close to being able to close this up be right back okay everybody well we're moving along now you can see I'm back and I've got uh, some LED strips that I made up for my lighting of the center part of the saucer here and I've got it mounted onto this piece of cardboard uh, this particular cardboard here is some uh, backing paper that comes with a paragraphics photo etch set you know the every time you order those you get a little bit of this stuff with it to support it and I like it because it's treated cardboard. It's got like a coating on the, you know, on the outside of it so it'll never rot or come apart or anything. And it's nice and stiff. You can substitute a piece of thin sheet styrene for this if you want to. So I've used this as my basic uh, platform. You can see I've cut out a sort of a square shape here. And I do this to get the right size by kind of lining it up with these two little tabs that used to be right here. And, uh, you know, the rear part of the BC deck right there and just kind of, uh, you know, something like that. And then I cut my uh, LED strips out here, which is the double density warm white that we used in the uh, the lower part of the saucer, um, and just kind of cut these to length. Now you want to make sure that you cut these LED strips. A lot of you guys that have worked with this already know, but for those of you that are new to it, make sure when you make your cuts, it's only in these little indicated areas here where you see the terminals are marked. Cutting it anywhere else and it'll render it inoperable. It won't work anymore. So pay attention to that. So what we're doing here is this is the you know I've got this pointing down. So when we put the saucer lid on top, this is going to light the lower half of the saucer in the center. And then up on the other side of this, I've got two little strips here, which are going to illuminate the inside of the BC deck here in the upper dome on the bridge. So you can see how that's going to work. Really simple. I kept all the wires uh, facing to the rear so that um, we can tie those all in together with the wiring that's terminated at the back part of the saucer near the impulse deck. And so we're ready to go with this. So now what I'll do, you can see I took some CA glue and I glued down, just like I talked about, not trusting the adhesive on this stuff. Um, I glued it in the, on the ends and in the center, and then I glued a little bit on each of these wires where they're on there so the wires are supported and they don't move around on the solder connections. So these are on there permanently and not going anywhere. So we're just going to kind of line this up and um, something just about like that. And then we're going to go ahead and glue this down, same method, using some CA again. Just make a spot in each corner and uh, one in the middle all the way around. Doesn't have to be a perfect job, you just want to make sure it's nice and secure. Okay, one in the center there, then we'll hit it with our accelerator again. I'll just give this a second to kick in. Okay, and that's that, guys. Everything's mounted there in the center, so we're going to have plenty of light coming into the bottom, plenty of light out the top. Now what I've got to do is I've got to come and tie all these wires together, get them all nice and cleaned up. So that'll be a boring thing for you to watch on camera, so we'll pause again really quick. 
Um, we're going to be coming back and adding some extended wiring onto these like I talked about so they can be a little bit longer and reach the control board wires in the bottom of the saucer. Once we get all that done, we'll have a pigtail basically here and that'll tap right into our main power. I want to make sure this is in camera for you. We'll have a plus and a minus for all this lighting here in the middle. That taps into the main power, that, that hub that I talked about, so that it all comes on at the same time. These will get connected directly to the control board outputs to get the blinking effect for the red light here on the top and the green on this side. And then we're ready to close this thing up, guys. We'll glue the edges and uh, we'll call that one a wrap for this video. video. So let me get these wires cleaned up, get my extended wires put on here. We'll have everything connected to the bottom and then we'll close it up for you. Be right back. Here we are back for the final stretch, everybody. I've got all my wiring connected from the top of the saucer to the bottom now, so I'm going to talk about what I did. As I said, I pigtailed all these wires together here, and uh, I got them all set up, and I got them connected to my main power hub. Uh, we didn't have to connect to the board to that. We're coming into our main power that we start off in the very beginning. Those two little circles of wire that I brought around, those are connected to this, so that when power comes on, these light up immediately along with everything else. And so we're set to go there. The red and the green navigation lights, I had to make extending wires. I brought those down and I brought them through this little slot right here. And I've got them connected to the proper outputs on the board. And then uh, we had two little extra wires here coming off of the board, which we're going to power up the, uh, the lighting for the shuttle bay, which, as I mentioned, we're not going to use that. We're going to light that ourselves, picking, picking up my main power once I install that in the secondary hull. So I just cut those off and terminate them and put some heat shrink tubing over the top so they're nice and tidied up and out of the way. Then we've got our, um, you know, everything's tied in here. Uh, the way we talked about in the very beginning with that little, you know, circle of power that I made at the very beginning, everything's just branching off of that. So these wires coming off of this are tied directly into that. Then I tied two more wires into that and brought them out down through the neck. And you can see I've got them labeled here, uh, power, and that's connected to my power supply. So we'll fire this up in a second and test everything. Uh, those will be pulled down through the neck and out through the opening of the, uh, deflector housing and we'll terminate that with all the wiring in the secondary hull and that'll tie everything together and then I've got two more wires the green and the gray which are outputs from the control board they run down and will come out through the neck down and out through the uh, uh, deflector housing again and those will connect to the two little blinking strobe lights that I'm going to install inside the uh, secondary hull at the rear and it'll make those flash so everything will all be tied together so basically when we close this up now this whole thing will be all wired and self-contained, right? So I've gone ahead and scraped all the uh, the glue off the edges here, and everything's ready to go. So what I've got to do when I flip this over and glue it down, I've just got to kind of put my hand in here and and um, make sure that I don't, um, you know, uh, get any uh, wires uh, pinched or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a little bit of my blue masking tape here, and I'm going to kind of bunch these wires up here just a little bit better. You could use zip ties, but you know it's cheaper to go this way. And you're basically just doing this to hold these together. So when you put it in, you don't have any issues with uh, you know, them getting pinched or grabbing onto anything. Probably only need one, but we'll probably go with two here. Let's go with one down here a little bit further. Uh, just for a little bit of extra. This is mainly for your own satisfaction, not really required. Um, just kind of helps tidy everything up a little bit there. And we'll do that. Um, and then one thing, one final thing I want to point out here is uh, something I should have mentioned at the very beginning when we were doing all this soldering. Very important step, guys. When it's a it's a habit that I've gotten into is what I do is anytime I make one single connection, like put one wire onto something, I immediately go and solder that. I don't go back and you know make a bunch of connections and then go back and solder everything uh, because you could forget where you may have may not soldered and that could be a real pain in the neck later on. Because, you know, sitting here static like this, it might work. But if it gets bumped or something like that, that wire could get knocked loose. And if you get a spot somewhere where, you know, you've got that going on, you're going you're gonna to have a hard time going back and figuring out where you forgot to solder. So a good practice to get into is to immediately, whenever you connect any wire, even if you're doing, you know, one at a time, make sure you solder that right away. It's a little bit more tedious that way, but it just, it's, you know, it'll give you a sense of... Um, It'll give you a sense of security that you didn't miss anything, and it's just a, it's just a smart habit to get into. Okay, so kind of keep that in mind. So we're basically ready to flip this thing over now and get this all glued down. So really simple here. I'm just using my regular 
liquid uh, model master glue. I'm going to go ahead and put a, I'm going to get my tape ready here too. Some people use clamps, but I like to use regular old tape to hold it together. So I'm just going to lay a bead of glue down all the way around this thing. And I'm going to be generous with my glue. Make sure I get plenty on there. If a little bit oozes out on the sides, we don't, we don't care about that at all because uh, we're going to be sanding this whole thing smooth anyway. Get that all the way around. These are, this is a big saucer, so it takes quite a bit of glue here. Nice speed all the way around. Try not to get any into the windows or anything, hopefully. This is a boring part, but a necessary part. Like I said, it's really important to get a nice, solid bond on this area right here. Really important. And make sure we get right up to that edge. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing on the uh, top. Probably not necessary, but just a little extra. Want to get you know plenty of glue in there. All the way around here. So yeah, this is working out really well, and like I said, this is the exact same procedure that I use every single time when I build one of these, and uh, I, I've really got it down to a routine, and it just works really, really well. So uh, hopefully you guys will find this information useful, and it'll help you when you uh, go ahead and build yours. So we've got the, the basic perimeter all the way done, so now I'm just going to put a little dab in each one of these little um, spots where the pin connectors are going to come together. And a little bit on top here, these little ridges, so that'll kind of help hold it together too. No need to go all the way across, but just a little bit there, or something a little extra. Okay, and I think I missed that one. We'll get that one real good. All right, so we're ready to to flip and and uh, glue together here. So. What I'll do is I'll kind of keep my wires up like this, and I'm going to flip it around. And then as I set it down on here, I'm just going to kind of start off on the other side there. Now what I do is I line this up so that we got our little bow light here. Um, this thing can fool you, so you want to make sure you got the bow light here at the very front of the saucer lining up with the center bow light on that side, and you'll be good to go. So I'm going to make sure as I look in here, just before I push it down, that all my wiring is nice and sitting in these little slots like I want them to. And we are looking good. We'll keep everything away from the neck area. All right, we're set. We can drop it down. I'm going to get a paper towel here so I don't get any glue on the uh, upper areas, hopefully. So I'm going to start off here at the very front and get that bow light locked in. You'll kind of feel it when it when it does its thing. Okay, that dropped right down like it's supposed to. And we'll start working our way around here. And it's just been my um, experience too that uh, some of these saucers, they fit together better than others. They, um, they just seem to... Uh, you know, as far as the edges go, whether they're nice and flush or not. Okay, so I'm starting off in one spot here, and I'm just pulling my, you know, getting my, a secure spot with my tape, and I pull it across that edge really tight, and then just bring it around to the other side. Okay, and I'll just work my way around the whole perimeter, making about maybe an inch and a half in between each one. You could do this with clamps, but you'd need a lot of clamps, and it just makes the whole thing a lot heavier and a lot more clumsy to deal with when you've got a million clamps. So I just like to use the glue, or the uh, tape. Works really good. This will probably sit 
at least overnight before I'll come back and start working on the uh, the seam. Get that all cleaned up. All right, so we're just working our way around here. Now, one little thing that I, um, you guys might be worried about that I didn't show you is just before I uh, closed this, or before I came on camera, I turned the power on and tested it, and everything was uh, was fine. So, right before I call it a night, I'll turn the power on one more time here before the glue has a chance to um, get really set up. And if anything's wrong, we'll be able to, we would we we would be able to um, get it back open. But I tested it as I said before I. Uh, got this far. Alright, we're coming around the bend here, guys. Looking good. Let's go a little further. Eh, we don't want to cover that up. You'll get to see that pretty light blinking when we turn it on here. As I said, sometimes these things, the saucer edges line up just perfectly, and sometimes there's a little overhang from the top to the bottom, like a little lip, and you just have to sand that down and get it all flush. No big deal. <clears throat> now, right now, you're going to see a little bit of light leak coming through, especially around the BC deck because we didn't, you know, we haven't even primed this. Um, one one coat of primer and that'll all go away because we've we've actually light blocked it from the inside so I think that's about it you guys let me go ahead and make sure my my wires aren't crossed here I've got my two wires you can see labeled there for strobe and two here labeled for power so now we go ahead and turn it on get the, get rid of all this extra junk Okay, you can see we've got our our BC deck lighting is coming through really nice here. Getting a little bit of bleed through here where the paint's a little thin, but don't worry about that. When we prime this and everything, that'll all go away. And then uh, down at the bottom, you can see all of our beautiful lights. Putting that lighting in the center gave us a really nice, you know, even lighting all the way through here. And then, of course, we got all of our lighting around the uh, uh, perimeter here that you can see. Our navigation lights are all working. Blinking nice and even. So we're all set, guys. Um, that's it for the saucer. The basic wiring and everything is done. So we'll uh, come back in the next video, and I'll show you some little tips and tricks I use for... Uh, we've got to putty up this little uh, joint between the B and the C deck. I, I see some people don't do that, but I like to put a little B to putty on there to make that all you know, blend in really nice. And then we're going to, of course, come around the whole perimeter and get that all cleaned up. And then we'll do our window, uh, you know, get ready for, make sure all the windows are cleaned up and everything. We'll go ahead and get this all, we'll mask off all of the, uh, the kit glass that's in there. And then we'll prime it and paint it. And then we'll come back and uh, seal it with some clear coat. And we'll be ready to start doing all the windows and everything with our canopy glue. So that's what you'll see in the next video, you guys. So I hope you enjoyed it and uh, everything's looking really good. So if you follow along with some of these tips, I hope it helps you out. We'll be along for the next one in a few days, guys. That'll be part three, more a little bit more on the secondary, or on the saucer here, on the seams and everything. And then we're going to move on to the secondary hull. So we'll see you for that one next. Take care and uh, happy modeling, everyone.